Good morning guys, back here in the shop. It is a nasty rainy day out. Just wanted to give you guys a little update and maybe fill you guys in, take you guys along a little bit more today. So we fixed that foot peg back here, or this full assembly down bottom, fix. Kind of patched it up. Seems to be nice and strong, welded, welded a couple bars and underneath. What I was working on last night, after, if you watch yesterday's vlog, I worked on framing up the back here so we removed all that seat assembly the rear two up seat uh, I cut off those big curved up handles there for the second rider and then I framed up this bed here and this is just going to be like a work rack just use some scrap steel for this but it is super strong what will uh, what'll be done I'm just going to tack this all the way around so it will be welded directly to the bike so there's no rattling or anything like that then um, a, just a sheet of plywood or something, something kind of disposable will go down in there. So we'll just it'll be cut to dimension and can fit right between these piece of angle iron I've thrown in. And that way, uh, I added these upright angle irons so you have some tie downs here. So they're all drilled. And so you have the option as well to add like a side rail, which I don't have any scrap steel here now for that, but that will be the goal. You can see it has a super nice profile here with the bike, just with the dimension I chose, and it'll be super strong as well. Little weld check here for you that might be interested. But I think it's looking pretty decent. Nice and strong. Did this with the MIG. And uh, yeah, let's get attacked to the bike. This is just a little Mastercraft flux core welder that I picked up there a couple months ago, and I have been loving it. I couldn't uh, couldn't ask for any more, especially for the price that I got this thing at. You only have two heat settings, but you have an infinite speed dial here. Usually run about five and a half. Seems to work well for for my skills and for the machine. I find you pushing any more than that, it seems to surge a little bit, or it just seems a little bit not smooth. And you just got your on and off button there. Super nice and solid there now. now. You can see when it all gets closed in, it's going to be a pretty clean setup. This is the factory seat, the actual one. You see how it fits all nice and proper here. But well, the center was completely gone. Where it was really broken out bad. It's no good to rewrap it with like that because you'll just punch down through the vinyl in the same spot. So I went, cut all that out, filled in a section with contact cement. Now I'll just. Uh, just shape this down a little bit. Already started, but it needs to be shaped down a little bit. And then what you can do is you can rewrap it. Now the bike has a little bit of bog, so I just decided to pull the carb apart here. I'll clean the breather, but as you can see, the carb is really dirty as well. So I'll do my best to clean it out, and uh, we'll see if that improves her running when she gets going. After just pulling off the bottom side of the carb, I could see that both the pilot and the main jet were almost completely blocked off. I also cleaned out the bowl there. Let me show you guys the gas that was in the bowl of this carb. So that's all what was inside that carb. And a lot of times, because of the way it separates from the gas, this won't get sucked up out of the bowl. Sometimes it does. Sometimes it gets sucked up and plugs things up, but sometimes it just sits down there and releases slowly and causes your engine to work poorly. Little sputters, backfires, things like that.
that for the couple minutes it took to do this, it was well worth it, and I'm confident that the engine will run better now. So all my camera batteries are dead here, guys. I'll try to fill you in a little bit with the uh, with the phone here. See the end is out of this pipe. The pipe is shot anyway, as you can see. It's all patchy and, and falling apart. But this, I think, is the main source of noise. So I'm going to see if I can tack this cap on. This is really corroded, and there's almost nothing to weld onto. But I think just... If I can just get it there in place, get a few tacks on it, that'll probably quiet things down a lot. So, I'll see what I can do. Well, obviously a really poor job, but again, with what I was uh, welding onto, not much. But, uh, it held just, just a series of tacks. You can't run any type of a bead, and a tack can just be just... Tss, tss. So you can't even form like a nice, a nice little bead there, a nice little puddle, because this is just so crumbly and dirty just spattering and flicking and popping and just a mess but hopefully that'll quiet her down dead my friend this is uh, that's all I can do for you I'd suggest looking for a pipe somewhere at a scrap shop or something much quieter much quieter so I'm just here now doing an oil change, just filled the bike with the just change out the filter, sorry drowned out the old oil see this nice yellow oil, let me show you guys the oil that came out of this thing well I am not being a good vlogger guys the footage you just watched on the bike with me welding and, and doing a bit of work with the bike, that was actually yesterday Newfoundland Hobbyist aired today, you'll see this video tomorrow around noon which is when I've been trying to release the videos today I have not done much filming I've been just go 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 busy and around taking care of business and uh, I've completely rearranged the shop here so before these two tables remember we're on along this wall which mean, meant I had to keep the welder and the forge and everything outside of that so it really narrowed the opening of the garage it also meant I only got to utilize one side of my tables here, which I am running out of space. I keep adding tools, I keep adding more facets to the business and trying to up my game and make a better product, a better knife for you guys. And uh, that just takes space, takes money, and money we can work with, we only have so much space. So. What I did was turn these tables in and out like you see here and now I can work around them. So I have drill press on this side, drill press on this side, my grinder is here, I have another grinder here. I have some extra workspace here now, I freed up some extra space which I never had before. Some table space here, uh, the buffer is in out of the way now. I can actually access my belts easier now and my buffing wheels and stuff when I'm buffing here. I think it's just it's going to be a lot better system. It is a little more crowded over here now next to like my, my bench, but everywhere else has more space. So I, th I think it's a more efficient setup. Now I did not plan to do any of this. I was just I was standing here and I was kind of grumbling about the amount of space and how it's just not working and how am I going to do this. And uh, I have the bikes here and we're expecting snow over the next couple days, which is earlier than I was expecting. And I was just wondering what in the world am I going to do? I, uh, I got too much stuff, too little space. So I just started tearing everything out and reorganizing it. And I think this will let me do. I have the DR stored over here now. 
that'll be moved later on and I'll do some work but I ha it's stored over there with a cover on it and the two sportsmen's are in here they're, they're pinched in here just making it but I can get the door closed and they'll be out of the weather for the storm in the next few days which is super super nice I still have not a lot but I have a couple feet of space here to work at the end of my bench and I'll be working on these blades this is what I have going here now the batch we glued up the other day are still on the clamps haven't had a chance to open them but they're all cured and ready to, ready to go another thing I'm thinking about is with everything changed the way it is I think I'm going to get going to be able to get new and more interesting can, camera angles for you guys especially when I'm working at the belt grinder but here's what we have this Santoku here is getting polished so I've already started the sanding on this one uh, an Islander uh, I can't remember the finish this one's getting. We have that bushcraft set, all heat treated. These are getting mirror polished. The mirror polished ones are the ones that get left because <laughs> they're the longest and they're so unenjoyable to do. I don't know, maybe one day I'll just stop offering it. But here's a custom going out that we made the brass for. And then here's a belt finish, so no hand sanding on this one. I sure hope you like this video. I hope you learn maybe something from the bike work or something. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Please hit that like button, hit the thumbs up. I'm going to go ahead now and start editing this along with getting the Newfoundland hobbyists ready. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you in the next video.